Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the resurrection of Jesus. And we're beginning our study of John's gospel account of that today. And we're going to introduce that today, and then we'll get into chapter 20, verses 1 through 10 uh, tomorrow, or next time that we're together. I just um, I want us to think about John's gospel. So Matthew, Mark, and Luke are being written probably in the 60s, in the decade of the 60s, maybe the very early part of the 70s AD. And John is writing 20 to 30 years later. John has access to the other three Gospels, which are called synoptics because they're very much alike. Matthew or Mark may be the first Gospel to be written. Uh, Luke would have been written a little bit later, but John's gospel is written at the end of the first century. And when John writes his gospel, he is perhaps the only one left alive among the eyewitnesses to give account. And because John has access to the other gospels, John is the one who fills in the blanks for us tells us important things, gives us names that we didn't know before. You know, like um, the person who anointed his feet that last week and wiped his feet with her hair, that was Mary of Bethany. Or that the person who, you know, um, uh, chided her for that, who criticized her for that, was Judas Iscariot. And we, we learned why Judas, you know, criticized her for that and that Judas was a pilferer of the money that was being carried around. Uh, we also find out that Judas is the one that carried the bag, not Matthew. I thought that was it. That's interesting. Uh, Matthew's the one who tells us about Jesus taking care of his mother from the cross. John is the one who tells us all the things Jesus said to them the night before the night he was betrayed. You know, things that we want to know that we wouldn't have otherwise. John gives them to us. And nowhere do we see this more clearly than in his resurrection accounts. And, and he, he tells us the same thing that we already know, that on early Sunday morning, the women came, the tomb was empty. Uh, they were told to go tell the apostles. Um, you know, the apostles, when they find out, they don't believe it. They have to come look for themselves. They see the empty tomb. They see that the tomb is empty. Uh, Jesus appears to them all at some point. Um, you know, um, we get all that in John's gospel. What we don't get is a great commission. We do get a, a commission of sorts um, at the end of chapter 21, which we'll talk about when we get there. What we do get, when when we get the account, he appeared to Mary. Um, or we get the account, you know, um, he showed them his wounds, um, or he had a special meeting with Peter. And we want to know, well, what was that like? <laughs> John tells us what that was like. John gives us these vignettes that we don't have anywhere else of people one-on-one -on -one having an encounter or an exchange with the risen Lord, uh, beginning with Mary uh, Magdalene. Also. John, in chapter uh, 20, um, uh, shows us that everything anyone needed to believe that Jesus was risen was given to them. For Mary, she didn't really believe Jesus was risen until she heard him say her name. Um, for Thomas, he said, I'm not going to believe. And unless I can see the wounds and his hands and his feet and his side and put my hand into it, I'm not going to believe. And what is he given? Here it is, Thomas. If that's what you got to do, then do it because it's here. Here's my wound. So we get these moments, these personal moments. We get lots of little details, you know, like John runs faster than Peter, but Peter... <laughs> Peter goes right in, doesn't stop at the door, but goes right into the tomb whenever John wouldn't go in. He just peeked in. Um, and then we get the whole episode 
of the breakfast on the beach in chapter 21 that we don't have anywhere else that is a very fitting way to bring the Gospels full circle. If this is the last episode we have in any of the Gospels, we say, well, it's not an Ascension account. No, it's not really even a, a, a Great Commission account either. But, there, but, but, but for us as disciples, if we're reading the Gospel not as um, someone who's hearing it for the first time, someone who needs to be convinced about the truth of it, but as someone who is seeking to be a disciple of Jesus and to follow Jesus all the way, even to the end of the age, it is the perfect way to end the gospel, to have that, that, that episode from Matthew 21, which reaches, and John's also, John's accounts reads that he reaches back to all the, uh, the three of the, the, uh, the other three gospels and connects immediately with them. Um, anyway, so we're going to begin with uh, chapter 20, uh, verse 1. Uh, next time, read through verse 10. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word.